Hey guys, what's going on? We're having a sump pump installed right now, so uh, there may be a little bit extra noise in the background. No big deal. So uh, I had a student yesterday that wanted to learn uh, a Dave Edmonds song that you've probably heard. I hear you knocking. And uh, he wanted to know if I had a uh, transcription for it. I said, hey man, you can figure that out. You've got good pitch. And he came, showed up to the lesson, and he knew the whole song as far as the chords. Pretty good. Now, I'm impressed. And uh, the problem was his his strumming hand, He his arm was at a kind of a strange angle, and I think he was kind of working his arm, and he was, you know, really thrashing it, uh, kind of tense. And uh, so we kind of worked on fixing his picking hand a little bit. Um, so he was he was kind of kind of chopping at it. That's just way too much motion. And I'm like, okay. Hey, we ran through the song one time. I said, now let's let's work on your uh, your picking hand. So I got him to. He was plus he was way back here which does have a bright sound, but if you go forward, it mellows out the sound a little bit. So, you know, if you need that extremely bright sound, go back to the bridge. But normally we're gonna be forward a little bit. So he was kind of, you know, working way too hard. It was exhausting me watching him. So I had to, you know, kind of get his attention and, and like, hey, look at me, look at me, look, 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 you know, learn this, man. So I got him to use the side of that picking hand, sit on that little corner, roll your hand forward, let these fingers out like that. Make sure there's a round circle there. Plus, okay, so we got kind of got him situated. I know this is irritating, but uh, where we end up is. There was some sort of a little uh, upstroke. Hear that? On these two strings, I'm hitting uh, this E and B. Something like that. It was kind of like we got close to it. So I'm doing like an upstroke one and two and three and four and or it could have been it could have been one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Anyhow, it was pretty intense little, uh, a few moments where we really focused super hard. I tried really hard to get his picking hand working better. Um, now, when it goes to A, it also has that, that A, hear that upstroke, I hit this A note on the third string, second fret, laying the index finger flat. Something along those lines. So that had the... And then he went to B. There was a little augmented chord it sounds like a piano or maybe a guitar overdub. It sounds like there's layers of guitars on the song, but that little augmented chord, if you can catch the augmented chords and understand them and play them, they always kind of stress me out because I'm not sure, you know, they just seem strange. So augmented would be like a eight, eight, seven on the third, second and first strings. A B augmented leads us to E. Hear that? 
I'm gonna turn up the amp a little tiny bit. Ooh, too much. Um, so here's kind of the groove. Something along those lines. On the B, I, I don't mean to pick on, the, on my friend, but I'm using him as an example of things I see that if we can fix that for a few people. Um, on the B, you know, when he was kind of chopping away, he was definitely clobbering the sixth string on the B chord. Okay, check it out. Here's what I'm hearing. Here's a B. It's a B. F sharp and B note for a power chord. He was definitely clobbering the sixth string open, you know, like sometimes. Like, holy smokes, that E does not fit in the chord, okay? So we have to control what strings we're hitting is kind of my job is to police all my students and I, it's, it's, if I didn't laugh, I'd cry, it's, you know, but when your hand is on the bridge and not swinging in space, a smaller motion, you can control, you can feel, you, actually I use my finger and pick to feel, my fingernail feels the string I'm next to, I can feel where I'm at. My thumb can feel what string I'm on. There's no way I'm going to accidentally swing and miss and hit the wrong string. I'm going to hit this correctly. Two strings. Or three. So, you might have noticed in the song, there is the F sharp. Oops. You can also do this, F sharp. A. B. sounds good or if you can make the stretch. One thing I've been talking about with my students is this B and this B. What's the difference? I say uh, this B is on thinner strings but their longer strings theoretically from here to there is longer than here to here on the thicker strings. Hear the difference? It's pretty subtle. Sometimes you really hear it. Uh, or say like this A versus this A. This one sounds a little muted. This rings out because the string is just long, you know, and it's an open string resonating on this uh, nut here. It sound, It just rings out a little better. This seems slightly muted. learn both and be ready to do both. So it's a little bit of a ramble, a rant, but for my students, you know, I, I want you hitting the right strings at the right time. And, you know, swing, sometimes you want to like, you know, swing your arm and do a windmill, do a Pete Townsend, you know, let it ring, let it move. You can move your hand anywhere you want, but for generally you want it. But at the same time, 
you know, if you can control what strings you're hitting, do whatever. But if you're like me, yeah, I like to know consistently what strings I'm hitting. So that's why I kind of teach that. You know, when people are holding a pick like this, I like to untangle that knot and get you back to that, which is your pick on your index finger on the first bone. You got three bones, one, two, three. First bone on the side, not the front. I don't like that. I want on the side. Let these fingers out. Keep it relaxed and you're set. As far as I know, there, you know, if you know something better, <laughs> let me know. There could be more. There could be better ways. I got an open mind to an extent. You know, if you can show me something better, um, I'm interested in that. So I, I still am learning every day. So that's kind of a rambling rant. Uh, I apologize if it was too much, too many words and not enough rock and roll. But uh, this is important that we get your picking hand at a good angle. Not, you know, sometimes people are twisted like this or like that. Or, you know, the pick is at a bizarre angle, slicing into the string, making an annoying, uh, harsh scraping sound. You, you want your pick to hit the string in a way that sounds pleasant. You're not... You don't want any of that scraping in there. You just want to get a, a nice sound by hitting the strings kind of square on with your pick. But it can be, check this out, rotate this way a little bit. That It's like a 45 degree angle. That's okay. As far as I know. Oops, I hit the wrong string for a second. But it was muted here. So my index here of my fretting hand is muting the sixth string slightly. So if I accidentally hit it, it's pretty muted. But like, let's say you're in playing, that's an E, so of course that E string works. What if you're playing an E flat? And you're like, well, you know, I often hit extra strings. Okay, what do you got? Okay, see what I mean? It's not good. We got to control that. <laughs> you know. So let's let's watch my my picking hand again. Versus That's horrible. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do is help a few people out. Get your picking hand situated and uh I feel like I've got things to learn about my picking hand as far as like economy picking and so forth. I, I need to work on that. All right, guys. So that was a, a lot of talk. I apologize again. So I'm going to get going. Uh, good luck. Let me know how you're doing and uh, have a great day. See ya.